I am Team Rattles from Singapore. This is an individual participation, hence this team only comprises of me. This year is my first year in robotics, and I have only competed in one other competition, which is IQ Challenge at Virtual RoboCup 2020. I participated in Cold Space Challenge GP U19 category. Two problems that I investigated are the oscillation of the vehicle as well as inefficient path planning. For the oscillation of the vehicle, Methods explored are conditional control and PID, while path planning algorithms such as greedy algorithm and the Dijkstra algorithm are explored. Using conditional control and Dijkstra algorithm, stability of the motion of the robot was improved and the robot travelled using a more efficient path. The challenge task requires the robot to stop at each orange waypoint and flash its LED for 2.5 seconds before moving, then returning to the end point. Each mini task would be to reach the waypoint in the shortest time possible before heading to the end point, after which the robot will just need to be programmed to stop at each waypoint and the overall mission will be accomplished. Firstly, the robot has to be able to follow the line. Conditional control made use of the IR sensors at the bottom of the car to establish the action that will be taken in order to facilitate line tracking. While the PID controller was also investigated, Conditional control was chosen in the end, as the map was generally simple enough to not require extreme changes in a short period of time, which would have necessitated the use of the PID controller. As for path planning, the extra algorithm was used. The map was first segmented into nodes and lines based on their features. Nodes represent the junctions and the color markers, where decisions can be made for the robot to choose a direction to move in. They also include the features that the robot has to go past, such as the waypoints. Lines represent the nodes that the robot could travel on. This algorithm takes each junction and each waypoint as a node in the map and sequences the points in an order that will ideally provide the fastest route, according to their relative distance from each other. It works in that it involves finding the node that will give the locally optimum route, and yet still considers routes from the unchosen nodes and will add the final results together to form the optimum route. Nodes are sorted into two sets, unvisited and visited, and the algorithm visits the neighbouring nodes of the current node. When the, when the destination node is considered visited, the algorithm is finished. The value assigned to the destination node will be the distance of the shortest path, and the nodes used to obtain that path can be derived. The Dijkstra algorithm was chosen over the other algorithm investigated, the greedy algorithm. This is because the greedy algorithm only considered the locally optimum road. There is no guarantee that the road provided will be globally optimum, Hence, it will be unreliable if implemented. For conditional control, different scenarios of the robot's possible positions from the line were first mapped out, and a corresponding action, a change in wheel speed, was assigned to each scenario to help the robot correct its position back to the center of the line as fast as possible. A series of inputs from the IR sensors were then taken to be checked against the conditions of each of these scenarios, and the corresponding output was executed. There are 11 cases to consider in total, and the highest priority is given to the sensors in the middle. The sensors at the end are of the lowest priority, such that the sensors in the middle are tracked first, to ensure that values returned show the robot's displacement from the line accurately. For path planning, this was done manually and not by code, as there were relatively little waypoints to consider. In the preliminary map, the junctions and waypoints were set as nodes, marked as pink or blue dots and the roads were assumed to be the possible paths the robot could take, not the lines. Values were assigned to the roads that connected the nodes, which corresponds to the shortest distance between the nodes. These values were attained by measuring the physical distance between nodes. Only the paths that would make sense to be used are marked with their distance and with nodes. For example, the path marked in brown will not be marked, as if this path was taken, it would completely cut off the node on the highway, as it would bypass the only entry to the highway. The first node called into question is the waypoint right in front of the start point. It will only be assigned the value of 1. The next node to be considered will be the node on the highway, and that node will be given the value of 12. The other neighbouring node of the first node will be the blue node right below it, and it will be given the value of 4.5. This is continued until the end point is reached. However, this map has pink nodes that the robot must pass, Hence, the road will have to be modified to include the pink nodes that were not covered. 
One problem that surfaced was the instability of the robot when it came to tighter curves, where the line broke off and line tracking was made impossible as a way of movement. At those areas, the car would constantly glitch out and overturn itself over seemingly nothing. Hence, the base speed of the car was lowered in order to preserve stability. The robot worked relatively well and quite closely to plan. It managed to follow the path closely and respond to all required waypoints as well as the colour markers involved in the path. If asked to solve the same challenge again, I would hope to be able to improve my path planning algorithm by making use of other variables such as obstacles present or difficulty of the turns in the road, as my current algorithm only takes into account the distance factor of the roads. Through this competition, I was introduced to different path planning algorithms. This was especially enlightening as I previously had no idea that such algorithms even existed. This competition also allowed me to explore and better understand how a PID controller worked as a feedback loop control system.